Hey everybody, it's George Tromley with Japanese from Zero, and we are continuing our journey through Japanese from Zero, book four. We are in lesson three. We are now going to go through some of the verbs before we get to any of the grammar. All right, here we go. Thank you for coming. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, I know I, I, know I promised not to wear this jacket again, but someone said it was fantastic, so I do read comments and I decided to keep it on. Ja, ikimashou ka? All right, every book on Kindle, we know that. Moving on. All right, today in the lesson three, which is using verbs to describe, we're going to be learning some of the verb usage. Now, normally I would put all the verbs together in one lesson, but there's、uh, a set of verbs that I want to talk about independently. That will be in verb usage number two after this. All right, here we go. Aruku. Aruku means to walk. And over here in this box right here, we're going to be showing you some of the typical sentence patterns that it's used with. So we've got somewhere, a place, Made aruku, walk up to a place. If you know the particles, this isn't news to you, okay? Because you can also walk from a place, but that's not going to be one of the examples. You can place kara aruku, okay?、Uh, place de aruku means to walk in a place, okay? For example, you can say, We walked in the park. Koen de arukimashita. You can also walk the park using what particle do you think? Oh, koen o arukimashita. Arukimash koen o aruku. Or michi o arukimashita. We walked the road, okay? But if you say de aruku, that's the event location marker. That's where you did the walking. All right, moving on. All right, let's go ahead and do some example sentences. Here we go. We have kara and made together, as I just stated. So those are just some example sentence patterns, not every single thing that's possible. So, what do you think this means? Now, what I've done in these sentences is I've given you green particles so you can kind of split it up in your head. It makes it a little bit easier to think about what does this mean. Right? From home or from the house. Konbini made until the convenience store. Aruite. Now, even though made translates to as even, it translates to up until or until, a lot of times it's just going to be translated as to in this case. I walked from my house to the convenience store. Made is your final destination marker. Okay? All right, next one. All right. Here we're taking aruku and putting it into a not want to do form. So, and we have a reason why we don't want to walk. It is because my leg or foot.、Hmm. Now, this isn't on the screen, but there are two. Now, I'm going to say something. This is embarrassing. I taught Japanese for so many years, not realizing that there was a different kanji for leg and foot. Now, if you're just looking at it in hiragana, which is what we were doing in book one, you think, oh, it's the same exact word. And it is. It's ashi and ashi, but there's a different kanji, which I'll show you right here on the screen. So this one is for foot or feet, and this one is for leg or legs. But the problem is, if a Japanese person says, ashi ga itai, You don't know if it means leg hurts, leg hurts, leg hurts, or foot hurts. So, you could, if, if, I, you should ask somebody to point, I guess. But I think it's an interesting thing that Japanese has these exactly different body parts, totally different body parts, even though they're connected,、uh, and they have the exact same sound, but the kanji is different. So, this one with the kuchi on the top, the big kuchi on top,、uh, right here. Is for feet, not legs. I don't want to walk since my feet hurt. Okay. All right, moving on. What does this mean? I, I didn't like the way my wife read this, by the way.、Uh, listen to the way she read this. It's so not passionate. It's like, <laughs> just listen to it. It's like, ここ 
what? You walked all the way here? It's so like, normally you'd be like, eh? ここまで歩いてきたの Like, more like emotional. But、uh, my wife's a Vulcan, just to let you know. I'm a big Star Trek fan, and I, I chose the Japanese,、uh, Japanese Vulcan, is what I chose to marry. Eh? ここまで歩いてきたの She has a great sense of humor, though. Great sense of humor. All right. What? Eh? <laughs> eh? You walked here? Now, when we learn very early on in the book that by foot is aruite. Okay? So we learn in, oh gosh, I don't know, earlier in the books, I don't know, book two maybe. I don't know if it was, it's probably book two. But the which means method, which is de, that you mark something、uh, that is the tool that you use to do something with de. For example, if you came by bus, what would you say? Bus de kimashita. And if you went by airplane, you would say hikoki de ikimashita. Well, walking is just the te form of aruku, aruite. It's really very early on in learning Japanese. You are using a double verb、uh, construction without realizing that you're doing it because we're just saying, hey, aruite means by foot. But really, what you're saying is, I walk and I came. So, aruite kita means I walked and came. I walk came. You know, aruite kimashita. Okay? Now, there is, there is a verb construction with te kuru, but here we're really just saying aruite kimashita. Uh, which is by foot, I came. All right, so kind of interesting there. You would never say, Aruite de kimashita. You would never say that. You would also never say, I mean, you could, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't say, Ashi de kimashita to say, I came by foot. That's just a little bit weird. Okay? All right, moving on. All right, now this particular verb is not in the current version of book four. This is in the revision. Now, it is March 2020. So I'm assuming sometime in 2020, a new revision of book four will be out. And everyone that has the book after that's like, what are you talking about? It's right there in the book. But if you don't have it, it means you have the first version or the long, 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 well, maybe it's not the first version. What version is this? Yeah. There's no, if there's no number here that says revision, then you've got an early revision or the first revision. Although, really, if you look inside, it might say that it's.、Uh, It's actually the third edition. So, this is the third edition, but we didn't have edition numbers on there. At least on this version of the book. It's possible that the version that you have, I, I have so many versions of the books here, I don't know what version you got. But the version without Hashiru is the 2020 and up edition. All right, so let's go ahead and listen. Hashiru. Hashiru. Now, Hashiru looks like an Iru Edu verb, but it is not. It is what? We call an iru edu exception or just a regular verb. It is a regular verb, which means you would translate it、uh, when you conjugate it, it would be hashiri mas, not hashimas. Okay? Hashimas means nothing. It's not a drop the ru verb. Remember, iru edu's verbs are iru edu drop the ru. However, this is e form plus the stem. This is also called a godan verb, which means it has the five steps that it、uh, goes through.、Um, I think we've talked a little bit, a little bit about this, but Japanese people call iru edu verbs ichidan. Okay? Ichidan means one step because they just drop the ru and then that's all they have to do. It's one step. They drop the ru and then they can do all of their forms. They can just add things to it. But a iru edu,、uh, sorry, a regular verb is what they call a godan verb, which is a five step verb. Okay? So、uh, you can go through the various, for example, iku, ikimas, akiku, k e k o s o ikanai, ikimas, Ikeru, ikou, and iku,、uh, which was earlier. Sorry, kakiku, keko.、Uh, all of the forms are throughout the hiragana chart. The five steps of those forms are built using the hiragana chart, whereas an iru-edu verb is just one step. All right, sorry. Sorry, I was a little bit、uh, unsmooth in my delivery there, but here we go. Let's go and look at some.、Uh, yeah, there's the note.、Uh, this is book four revised edition ni tsuika sareru doshi. Tsuika means to add. Sareru is passive, means it will be added. Okay? And doshi means ver,、uh, verb. All right, so place made hashiru. Same thing with aruku, the exact same thing. This is not like every possible form. It's just to show you what you can do with hashiru. It's just like、uh, aruku in the sense that you can say place kara hashiru. 
to run from a place or run to a place. And here we go. Here's that O that we were doing that I talked about uh, that wasn't on the screen earlier. But to run around a place, you use object uh, particle. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Object mark, object marker, object particle, O. All right. Oh, was there anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna just do an example Q&A. What example Q&A is, we give one question and multiple possible answers. Here we go. See if you can translate as we go along. All right, so 運動する means to exercise, but you could also you could also say exercise. Exercise. If you want to ask your friend something, you could say 毎日 exercise をしていますか? Do you exercise every day? We have to use stay must form because it's an ongoing action, right? I could, however, say though, 運動をしますか? So I wouldn't exactly have to say していますか? Okay. Do you exercise every day? Same question. 毎日運動をしますか? Or 毎日運動をしています? Both work. And uh, you need to lie here and say that you exercise every day. I will lie and tell you that I exercise every day, but I don't. All right, so do you exercise every day? We should exercise every day. My neck hurts right now for some reason. Because I my neck hurts, I cannot do exercise. That's not true. I'll be exercising after this. All right. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot how to recording. Hi. Right. Now, I want to point out that even here we're saying, even though we're saying this. Hi. Even though there is this verb, hashiru, you Japanese, when they're talking about exercise, they can say, running, running or uh, jogging, running, both of those also work. You don't have to say, so yes, I run 15 minutes every day. Uh, have you tried to run 15 minutes? It is exhausting. 10 alone is exhausting. Alright, so up top we have a time that we run, and here we have a distance. Now, please remember, there would never be a particle after these. You would not say, Nikiro o hashiteimasu. Okay? This is the rule that you learned way, way back in the other uh, earlier videos that uh, counters typically never have a particle associated with them. So you don't say futatsu o kudasai. Okay, you say futatsu kudasai. Same thing. Counters don't require particles. That is different if you come from learning Korean. In Korean, you can have a particle with a counter, but not Japanese. That's why these are just slapped right up against the verb. Okay, moving on. Now, this is a little bit different than what we had before, which was Ashi ga itai kara, because my feet hurt. This is ashi ga itaku naru. I don't remember where we teach that. It's probably book three, but itaku naru means to get hurt, to become hurt, because my feet end up hurting. Hashirenai desu, okay? Since my le oh, and I wrote legs here, it should be, uh, we should definitely have. Just, if you just heard this. Iie, ashi ga itaku naru no de. Definitely 100% means legs uh, or feet. It's both. But here, because we have this, it's more feet than legs. All right. So, since my legs hurt, uh, start to hurt. That's what kunaru does. Kunaru shows a progression from not hurting to becoming to hurt. All right. Here we go. Here's the most important verb of this lesson. Ageru. Okay. Ageru. Now, there, if you look up ageru in the dictionary, it could mean to raise up, but here we're talking about to give. Now, ageru is to raise up. You're giving it up to somebody. That's kind of the thought behind it. All right. So you can give a thing, thing o ageru. You can give it to somebody, ni ageru. Okay. And you can be the person who gives. But I want you to pay attention here. What you do not see here is given from a person. You will not see any from here. It's always leaving you. It's never to you. It's always away from you. This is to give away, to give to somebody. This is very important because Japanese has a whole other verb 
when you're given something, when something comes your way as a give. All right, let's look at some example sentences. Right, so here we have Otosanga, father, he's the one doing the giving, that's why he's marked with a ga. Okasan ni, two mother, ni, showing two. Hana o, o marking the object of the thing that was given. Agemashita, gave. Wonder why he had to give flowers. All right. By the way, second day without internet here at the office. Yay. Yes, I was on the phone many hours today, still didn't get my problem fixed. Uh, my father gave flowers to my mother. Okay. So, very simple. We show that it's from the father out to the mother. Okay. Now, take a little bit of time on this one. Again, sorry for the uh, error that you hear coming in this recording. So, here we are giving a smaho, which is a smartphone. When are we giving it? Tanjobini, on a birthday. Which birthday? Musume no Jusansai no Tanjobi. On my daughter's 13th birthday, I will give her a smartphone or what we call a cell phone. Musume no Jusansai no Tanjobi ni smaho agemas. So this is the mother or the father saying what she's going to give to her daughter on her birthday. Okay? So on my daughter's 13th birthday, I will give her a smartphone or just a cell phone, what we call it. Now, here. I really want you to think hard about this next one. This is a quiz. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to give you the English first. So, how would you say? And this is, by the way, a trick question. How would you say? Now, this is from the 13-year-old girl's perspective. The mother said she's going to give her the phone. Now, it's after the birthday, and she says, my mother gave me a smartphone on my birthday. Now, I'm going to give you time to think about this. You're probably going to get it wrong, unless you know verbs. Unless you have studied outside of our books, you might get this wrong. And don't feel bad. This is designed to make you be wrong, so that you know you can never do this, right? You could never, for example, say, Okaasan ga watashi no tanjoubi ni sumaho o agemashita. You could never say that. Why? Because it's coming to you. You could say that my mother gave my brother a phone on his 13th, 13th, 13th birthday. I could say, Okaasan ga ototo ni 13 sai no tanjoubi ni sumaho o agemashita. You could say that because it's going from her to someone. But if it's to you, you can never use ageru, okay, ever. All right, so here's what it really is, okay? Right? So it's kureru. Now, we don't know kureru yet. That's coming up in Lesson 13 of this particular book. So, uh, but just keep that in mind that if you are receiving something with a give and you want to say so-and-so gave me, gave me is never ageru. Okay? All right. All right. Good. Point made. Moving on. All right. Here we go. Ochiru. Ochiru. Now, ochiru means to drop, to fall down, or bonus. Um, my star isn't showing up here on the top, but it, it's probably got a stupid animation on it that comes at the very end. Uh, bad PowerPoint design. Uh, but to come off is going to be something not in the book, uh, but uh, a, a thing that ochiru can do. It's a bonus for the video. All right. So here we have thing ga place kara ochiru to fall from a place. Okay. Or place. Ni ochiru, to drop to a place. These are just knowing how to use particles, okay? All right, here we go. No, oh, there, I was like, why didn't it move forward? Because my star showed up. All right, here we go. All right, see if you translate this. Now, I'm guessing the one word you might not know here is yuka. Okay, so what dropped? And where did it drop to? Kuruma no kagi ga, the car keys, 
床に to the floor 落ちました。車の鍵が床に落ちました。Car keys fell onto the floor or to the floor. Alright. 葉っぱがプールに落ちています。Now, I want you to think why in this sense do we have 落ちています。Listen again. 葉っぱがプールに落ちています。Now, we could have said 葉っぱがプールに落ちました。Totally fine. But because it's 落ちています、the meaning is different. Now, if I said, so 葉っぱ is a leaf and to the pool, 落ちました。It fell or they fell. The leaves or the leaf, right?、Uh, because Japanese plurals、uh, are contextual. It's not. There's no such thing as hapas, right? Ooh, there is a thing called hapas. Go look it up. You're going to be disappointed. H A P P A S. Go on Reddit and just look up hapas. They will disappoint you. Just like they disappoint their fathers. <laughs> All right.、Uh, Hapa means leaf. Hapa ga puru ni. If I say ochimashita, it just means the leaves fell into the pool. But if I say ochite imas, it means they fell and they're still there, right? This is where Japanese has a little bit more fidelity than English. So the English translation of this is going to look a little bit weird. A leaf or the leaves、uh, are fallen into the pool. It means when we say ochiteimas, we know that it fell and we also know that it's still there. But if I had said just ochimashita, we're not sure if they're still there. I could be talking about something that happened 14 million years ago, okay? Not that I was alive. Okay, okay, next sentence. Kabin ga table kara ochite, ware mashita. Alright, here we're using the ochiru verb in a、uh, sequence of actions that happened.、Uh, that's what you do when you have te. Te, 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 te shows actions in a row. Okay, so let's listen to it again. Kabin ga table kara ochite, ware mashita. So, kabin is a flower vase. What about it? Table kara ochite. It fell off of the table and. Ware mashita. We do not know this verb from the books. Write it in your notes. Wareru. Wareru means to break, okay? To crack.、Uh, it's used for shattering. It's more like a shatter verb instead of a break. It's a break for things that are like glass.、Uh, if we could have said, koareru. But koareru could be a car can break too. It, it's, it's more for like a machinery breaking type of a thing. All right. All right. So the flower vase fell from the table and broke. So here you can see that ochite translates to fell and. All right. Here's a very topical one. Yes. Now, Kabuka is a really good word to know if you're an adult、uh, above 18 and you can trade in the stock market. Kabuka is the、uh, price of stocks. So, Kabu is a stock and Ka is the value or the price of the stock. Now, here, De marks a reason. Okay? So, Corona. Uirisu is the reason or the tool okay, that made this happen. Kabuka ga okiku ochita. Now, here we're talking about a non physical thing that's dropping, and you can do that. Okay?、Uh, up until now, we were talking about physical things dropping. We could talk about stock prices dropping. right? And here, even though okiku is largely large drop, dropped, hugely. They dropped hugely. Okay, they dropped largely, but it just makes more sense to call it sharply. Okay,、uh, so stock prices dropped sharply due to the coronavirus. All right, moving on. So now in this one, we're going to do a, a sort of this is the kind of the bonus usage for Ochiru. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to this. Uh, you know what? I forgot to colorize the particles here. I apologize. So, Okiniri no shatsu no yogore ga ochinakata. So, yogore 
comes from the verb yogoreru, which means to get dirty. Okay, so it's you can call it like dirt or the whatever made it dirty. It, it is it now has not it's not necessarily dirt. It could be mud. It could be blood. Whatever, but it's yogore, the dirtiness. Okay, so okiniiri means favorite. Okiniiri no shatsu, my favorite shirt. No yogore. So the thing that didn't drop or come out or come off was the dirt. So the dirt from my favorite shirt didn't come out. Okiniiri no shatsu no yogore ga ochinakatta. All right. So you can see now, ochiru is used to try to get something from sticking. Like on clothing, okay? Ochinakatta. All right, here's another one. Kono hiyake dome wa ochinikui desu. Okay, so now we're combining what we learned in、uh, a couple videos back. Ochinikui. Difficult to come off, right? So, what is difficult to come off? What's difficult to get off? It is kono this hiyake dome. Hiyake dome means sunscreen. Literally, Stop sunburn. Hiyake means sunburn. Dome means to stop. This sun stop, sunburn stop, is hard to come off. Okay? It's hard to get off, would be make more sense, right? Or come, actually, no, you know what? I gotta, I gotta correct myself here. Ochiru would mean to come off. So if you're swimming a lot, it's not gonna come off, right? Ochinikui desu, right? And these are all states. This is just a stative verb. What a stative verb is, is it explains what has happened. It's not an action that you're doing, okay? If I wanted to say to drop something on purpose, to push something down, bonus, we'll learn it later on, most likely, otosu. Otosu means to push something off. So, otoshi ni kui would mean hard to get off by me doing it, okay? But ochi ni kui means it's, in this case, a good thing. If you're swimming or something like that, you wouldn't want your sunscreen to come off very easily, okay? Okay,、uh, let me just show you, let me just explain one more time. So, this, if it was on my hand and it just it randomly like fell off on its own, it just kind of fell off for whatever reason, that would be ochimashita. But if I did that, if I knocked it off, it would be otoshimashita. I knocked it down, I pushed it down. Otoshimashita. Otosu. All right, bonus. Moving on. All right, here's a good one. This is a good one. I want you to remember this because it's probably true for you. So, shibo means fat. And what kind of fat? Stomach fat. Okay? Man, I'm not losing any of this belly fat. Okay? My belly fat won't come off or won't drop off, or I'm not losing any of my body fat. Let's just do that again. Okay, gonna, it's kind of like a little bit of a desperate thing. You're like, ah, I want my fat come off. Okay. Not desperate, but I mean, the, 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 the exclamation point makes it a little bit different. Bikuri chong. Bikuri chong in、uh, Japanese. All right. That's it, I believe, guys. If you would like to learn more Japanese, certainly follow along with Japanese from Zero, book four. There is a lot more in the book, even the older edition. You know, don't think just because there's a revision coming up that this book doesn't have everything in it if you already bought it.、Uh, and I can't tell you when it's going to come out. Everyone's going to ask in the comments. I don't know when it's going to come out.、Um, it's pretty far ahead, but、uh, books take time.、Uh, this book has 428 pages, so it's pretty hefty. Uh, keep in mind, there'll be things we'll be taking out of this book. Not only are we adding things, but some things are being taken out. So it's a mixed bag. Which one do you want? All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Oh, you guys are still here. Well, you might as well watch another video. What else are you doing during quarantine? All right, this one or this one's pretty good. And hopefully, you did check out Adventures in Asia channel, my other channel. Bye. Oh, yeah, subscribe too.